Hello, brethren. We come to another study from forward to Yahweh. I'm going to start off by showing you two videos, clips, and then I shall come back and comment on them. What would Jesus say about Christmas? I'll tell you. You ready? What would Jesus say about Christmas? Well, that's an excellent question, and I've got my own opinion on that, and I believe that Jesus would say, why are you guys celebrating my birthday when it's not my birthday? As we all know, Jesus was not born on December 25th. Well, why are we celebrating Jesus' birthday on a day that wasn't his birthday? Now, maybe your kids are small and you celebrate their birthday on a weekend because their birthday lands on a weekday, so you might move it a smidge, but nobody moves it months. And I think if Jesus saw everybody and told us exactly what he thought about celebrating his birthday on December 25th, he would say that you are all celebrating my birthday in honor of the sun god. Horus, where they used to sacrifice babies to please him. And if you really think, if December 25th was actually a day of sacrifice of babies, how many babies would they have had to have had to please Horus? Well, quite a few, I would imagine. Well, how many months does it take a baby? Because people want to be prepared. They want to plan ahead. So that brings us back nine months prior to Christmas, where... Easter. We celebrate Easter for what? The resurrection. Coincidentally, Easter, which is also another god, Ishtar, the god of war and fertility, which is why there's rabbits and eggs, was actually a pagan holiday that was observed by basically having an orgy. So everybody got together on Easter, had a lot of sex, so nine months later there'd be a lot of babies and coincidentally when all those babies were born old horus was there december 25th wanting you to slice them open and sacrifice the babies to him and then here we are thousands of years later celebrating baby jesus's birthday on christmas when in reality on christmas was a sacrificial day where millions of babies were slaughtered and that is what i think he would think how dare I showed a Christian lady that the video, to this video, which as you can see, explained the connection between two of the main annual celebrations of the world. It was Christmas, Christians participate, Easter and Christmas. It asked and answered a question of what would Jesus say about Christmas? The connection being nothing to do with Jesus, God, nor the Bible except that they all speak against the keeping of such satanic times. Easter is when satanic god Ishtar, as he said, is honoured by orgies to conceive babies, and Christmas is nine months later when the babies are born and sacrificed in honour of God Horus. I got no response from the lady, as if she was, she was desensitised to the information. When later I asked for their view on it, she said, it is the day we are given for Jesus' birth. I remembered verses as Matthew chapter 7, verse 9. Or what man is there of you whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or, what, or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? My point is, do we just take something because it's given to us? I mentioned if you're given a, 20, a fake £20 note, do you honour that fake £20 note? Or if you told a lie, do you honour the lie? So who gave those periods? For the father of children of the light or the devil, the father of children of the darkness? John chapter 8 verse 44 says, You are of your father, the devil. For he is a liar and the father of it. So those who are of the devil's, the devil's children believe his lies. The devil gave those lying dates for God's son, son's birth and death to, to deceive the whole world. 
as it says in Revelations 12, 9, which talks about him receiving the whole world. So when was Yeshua, who was wrongly called Jesus, really born? To minimize on the explanation, I shall assume you know it was not the 25th of December, nor any date near it. I think many people, Christians, accept that. The Bible gives some indication as to when he was born. However, we must remember we are not told to remember his birth, but his Passover memorial death. A memorial that is mentioned in Exodus chapter 12, verse 14, at the first Passover and Exodus out of Egypt. She, the lady to whom I spoke, will give, oh no, sorry. I'm talking about when Jesus was born. A verse in the Bible that says, she will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Yeshua, sometimes spelled Y-A-H as I have done or Y-E-S as someone or people spell it. Same sound, different spelling. Because he will save his people, so not everybody, from their sins. And you know the history of um, the, two, the 12 tribes of Israel, 10 of them sinned and were um, scattered by the Syrians, and two tribes, Judah, went into Babylon and came back um, with Nehemiah and so forth. Our studies have covered the past. Anyway, that verse about when Yeshua was, was going to be born is in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. None of the early believers, whether Jewish or Gentile Christians, or people the Bible shall call them, we call them Christians today, but they're actually called sect of the Nazarenes. Anyway, none of the early believers celebrated his birth in the, new, in the first New Testament centuries. It simply was not a part of the early, I uh, use the Christian word Christian loosely, because what you're used to, Christian tradition. However, it is our responsibility to educate both Jews and non-Jews about the timing of the prophecies of Messiah's birth. And what better time to do it than this week, which is the Christmas, what they call the Christmas week. Now, for many Christians and non-Christians, a spirit of joy and tenderness is triggered at this time of year when they remember Jesus' birth. For both groups, the holiday of Christmas is reviled, perhaps because of the commercialism, but also because they understand its pagan origins. Charles Spurgeon, a respected Baptist preacher and theologian of the 19th century, condemned the Christmas as a pagan holiday. <coughs> Indeed, the world did also, only up until a few hundred years ago, when laws were actually passed against keeping Christmas. Sometimes some Christians are open during this Christmas season to hear about its true pagan origins. But does the word pagan really deter them? Do they associate it with being against God and displeasing to him? Or have they become desensitized? Persuading themselves why it is all right to honour the season, i.e. because they, they are doing good. As feeding the poor and so forth on that day. As if the poor, the lonely, the suffering, etc. only materialise on that day and cannot be fed on other days as God appointed times as listed in Leviticus chapter 23. So coming on to the birth of Messiah. The birth of Messiah to Miriam, which the Bible calls Mary, a virgin, was miraculous, as was the life that Yeshua lived. Many questions remain as to when Yeshua was born. Was he really born in Bethlehem during the winter? The New Testament speaks of shepherds tending their sheep in the fields, Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 12. Jerusalem can be cold in late December make it unlikely that the shepherds would have been able to graze their sheep at that time of the year. Sleeping with the, sleeping with the sheep outside would have been very cold. While the Bible does not specifically specify the month of his birth, we do have some clues that lead us to determine the approximate timing of his birth. 
Miriam conceived when her cousin Elizabeth, or Elizabeth in English, was in her sixth month of pregnancy, Luke chapters 1, verse 24 to 26. Elizabeth probably conceived early in the fifth month of the Jewish calendar, Av, which is early July. This is likely since the angel Gabriel appeared to her husband, Zechariah, while he was serving in the temple as a priest in the division of Abijah. Luke chapter 1 verse 5 says that. And advised him that Elizabeth would become pregnant. Luke chapter 1 verses 11 to 24. The Talmud, um, so Jewish traditional writings, and all the Jewish historical sources reveal that the Abijah served during the last two weeks of the fourth month of the Jewish calendar. So it's not May, but the Jewish calendar, which is starts around the end of March or so forth, according to what year it is. Anyway, the fourth month is called Tammuz, which is about late June. The Bible says that Arthur Zachariah came home from his service in early Av, Elizabeth conceived. I said Luke chapter 1, verses 23 to 25. Nine months of pregnancy and another six months of Mary's pregnancy, make it over 50 months total, brings us to the seventh month of the Jewish calendar, Tishri, due which falls the Feast of Sukkot, or the Feast of Tabernacles, which is mentioned in Leviticus chapter 23, verse 33. The Apostle John tells us how Yeshua is the word that tabernacled among, among us. It reads, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. John chapter 1 verse 14. The word that John used in Greek for dwell and tabernacle share the same root word shene, which as the verse says, but when the Jewish festival of tabernacles, shenopiga, was near, June, John chapter 7, verse 2. Through these biblical, historical, and linguistic clues, we can come to a fairly educated guess that Yeshua may have indeed been born during the biblical feast of Sukkot, also known as the Feast of Tabernacles. This is one of the three specified holy festival times when the men were to go before God, being Passover, Shavuot, and Sukkot, that God tells the Jews that they must observe in Jerusalem. We read this in one place in Exodus chapters 23, verse 14. Sukkot, tabernacles, otherwise known, occurs in late September or early October, depending on how the year, the year starts. The year does not start like the, the Gregorian calendar, it starts with the new moon. So according to when the new moon, when moon comes, you start counting the, the days and the months. And you see this principle set up in Genesis chapter 1, verses 14. Okay, we don't know exactly the year Yeshua was born. We also know that two of these biblical holy festivals were fulfilled as he was crucified on Passover and that the promise of the Holy Spirit of Joel chapter 22, etc., was manifested um, or prophesied in Acts chapter 2, the day of Pentecost. Remember the Old Testament prophecies, for example, of Joel, was to the Israelites who keep God's commandments and the covenant of Exodus chapters 24, verses 4 to 7 not to sun and other pagan Christian gods, Easter and Christmas. So I repeat, the prophecies of the Old Testament were spoken to the nation of Israel, to them, especially Joel and the promise of um, Acts, Acts chapter 2. But yet Christians like to claim it for themselves, and they do not keep the 
covenant sign as said of Exodus chapter 24 verses 4 to 7. So when did Christmas celebration begin? Celebrations begin. As stated above, neither Yeshua's Jewish disciples nor the Gentiles who joined themselves to them, the followers, followers in the biblical times, in at least the first and second centuries celebrated the birth of Yeshua. There is no extra biblical evidence supporting the existence of this celebration in the writings of the early church fathers, such as Irenaeus, who lived 130 to 200 AD, or Tertullian, who lived 160 to 225 AD. Actually, Oregon of, Al of Alexandria, who lived 165 to 264, writes against following any pagan practices celebrated by, Rome, by the Romans, of which Ishtar and Horus were too. So it is fair to say that for the first 300 years, at least after Yeshua's birth, there was still no celebration of Christmas. I will not go into when Christmas as we know it today started. I have circulated many information on such in the past. We all go to is one of the excuses of Christmas keeping Christians is give. And it is, it's their as I said, one of the excuses that they give is that they do not do it for the original reasons, i.e. the pagan reasons as if they can change the purpose of the day. The methods of memorials may change over time, but the original purpose ends, whether one is ignorant of its origins or not. For example, these same Christians say Jesus died to atone for their sins. And they say, we do not have to kill animals as in Leviticus chapter 16 of the Old Testament but simply have faith. This is actually stated as a precept of God in the Bible. A change to sacrifices of praises rather than of animals, which is for the purpose why Yeshua came. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 11. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin, are burnt outside the camp. Wherefore Yeshua also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered outside the gate. Let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp, outside the camp, bearing his reproach. Verse 14. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. This is a verse to make note of. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. So in other words, the memorial is kept by praises of our lips rather than slaying or sacrificing of animals. Similarly, they, these Christians accept the Holy Communion as a memorial of the last Passover meal Yeshua had with his disciples. I say this is wrongly called the Last Supper. So there we see that the method may change, but the original purpose of the memorial stands. Well, the devil has also used this precept, changing how his days are honored and remembered, not by the sacrifice, not in, in, in the for Christmas, not by the sacrifices of newborn babies, but of worshipping worship songs to him on his day in deception, it relates to Jesus' birth. Singing and parching, when I am sure sex still takes place between drunken persons who celebrate in the season or people who are on holiday, holiday season. So, what would Yeshua, who I said most, called Jesus say? 
Acts chapter 7, verse 37. This is our guide. This is that Moses, we said unto the children of Israel, a prophet shall Yahweh, your God, raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me, him shall ye hear. So we are told to listen to what Yeshua would say. Christians who keep Christmas and other non-biblical religious theology claim they are doing them in honor of their Jesus. They really do not know who he is, although they may have heard or read of the verses stating who he is. John chapter 1 verse 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And verse 14, and the word, which was God, was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So, is it not plain? He is the manifested word of God in human flesh, in a human flesh body, so that we can see and hear him without being afraid, as those in Exodus chapters 20, verses 18 to 19, when God was speaking to them and the thunder and the lightning. Or that we don't die, as would have done to Moses in Exodus chapter 33, verse 20, when he asked God to show him his glory. God said he couldn't see him and live, that is. I have shown in other studies the flesh word of God is the same as the written law of God. Jesus was a living law. Scripture speaks of the attributes in the same way. So here's a summary. Truth. John chapters 14 verse 6. Yeshua says he is the truth. Psalms 119 verse 142. Holy. Acts chapter 4 verse 27. And Romans chapter 7 verse 12. Perfect. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 9. Psalms chapter 19 verse 7. Righteous, in respect of Yeshua, 1 Corinthians chapters 1 verse 30, and in respect of the law, Psalms 119 verse 172. Light, John chapter 8 verse 12, Proverbs chapter 6 verse 23. Just, Acts chapter 22 verse 14, Romans chapter 7 verse 12. Abide in forever, John chapter 8 verse 35, Psalms 111 verses 7 to 8 should be in the heart, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17, Psalms 40, verse 8, gives freedom, no con condemnation and liberty, Romans chapter 8, verse 12, James chapter 2, verse 12, sorry, Romans chapter 8, verse 1, James chapter 2, verse 12. So therefore, we sum it all together, rejecting the law is rejecting Yeshua and vice versa. Thus, when Christians use verses like Ephesians 2 verse 8, which says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Note the through faith. By something, through something. You have to go through the something to get the grace. They, these Christians, are forgetting faith in whom and what which are the same, as I just read out, the law and Yeshua is the same, are the same. Their Jesus and the word of God, his commandments as found in the Old Testament. I say Acts chapter 738 tells us that the New Testament believers, the us as the verse ends, are supposed to follow the same oracles of God was given to those at Mount Sinai. Thus, like in Exodus chapter 20, verse 6, we get the grace through the faith of God's word keeping. Exodus chapter 20, verse 6 says, And showing mercy unto thousands of them that criteria one love me, and criteria two keep my commandments. So Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 is given to those who have the faith in the word of God. 
his commandment keepers, not Christians, not Easter, not Christmas, sorry, not Easter participants. The same criteria as kept by Abraham, the father of faith. Two verses I speak of Abraham, Genesis chapter 26, verse 5. It reads, because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes and my laws. Romans chapter 4, verse 3, speaking about his faith. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. And you can see also Hebrews chapter 11, verses 8 and 17. Romans chapter 10, verse 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So you hear the word of God to get the, to believe it, and then get the faith in him. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17 tells us, And we are to take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So there it is our clearly. The word of God and Yeshua are one and the same. From Genesis to Revelations, obeying God and forsaking all connections with things of the devil, meaning paganism, has been our instructions. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with, with unbelievers. Now, a, a proper believer is one who believes the truth, not one who believes the error. So one may call, some Christians may call themselves believers, but they're not real believers. They're because they're foreign things of paganism, such as Christmas and Easter keeping. So, be, so this verse apply, applies to them. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion have light with darkness, and what concord hath Christ with Baal, the devil, or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And I don't mean that an infidel is one who may think they believe, but they're not, as those of Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to 23. Continue, Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16. And what agreement had the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God hath said. I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, says Yahweh, and touch not the unclean thing, then I will receive you. Christmas, paganism, Easter, unclean. Verse 18, 2 Corinthians 6, 18. And will be father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says Yahweh Almighty. 3 John chapter 1, verse 7. Because for his name's sake, they went forth, taking nothing of the Gentiles. So we cannot mix things of the devil, things of the Gentiles, and think we can use them for God. You have to take nothing of them. The traditions, you remember when God um, told Joshua to go and destroy them? Even their gold was to be destroyed. Especially if it's in the, in the first battle. We are directed at the end of our Bible, Bible manual to have the same two criteria as did Abraham. Revelations chapter 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that criteria number one, keep the commandments of God. And criteria number two, faith in Jesus. Remember, faith in Jesus is the word of faith in God's word. Because he is the word of God. So who hears the calling, the warning? As I said, the person to whom I shared the information <coughs> on the origins of Christmas and Easter were so desensitized by their Christmas practice that they did not hear the voice of warning not to recognize or have any association with things of darkness. Christmas. They acknowledged receipt of information and even told me they shared it with their friend. Yet they tried to connect it with doing good. 
as those that said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to 23, who, were, who said, Lord, Lord, we did all these good things for you in your name. And he said, depart from me. I knew you not. You were committing iniquity. So many are keeping Christmas, thinking they're honoring Christ. They are committing iniquity. Yeshua there perceived good works in his name was iniquity, as I said. God clearly instructed in Deuteronomy chapters 12, verse 32, take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by foreign them, talking about paganism, after they, after that they be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, how did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. So we are to say so far that we're not even to inquire, have the knowledge of what they do, so as to be foreign it centuries later. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 7. Be not wise in thine own eyes, or shall I say your eyes. Fear Yahweh and depart from evil. Proverbs 14, 16. A wise man feareth and departeth from evil, but a fool rageth and is confident. In other words, they believe that what they're doing has some merit in God's eyes. They were similar to the crab that crawled into the hot cooking oil in the other video, which I shall now show you, and we'll come back and comment on that one later. person in the world. I laughed at this, but after I laughed, I had a realization. This is a perfect example of what Satan and the demons do to human beings. They position you to lead yourself into destruction and then laugh at you after you do it. The level of cruelty this person had for this crap pales in comparison to the level of cruelty Satan has for humanity. Watch this a few times. Think about how that crab probably thought he was walking into water, but it was actually a substance that led to his death. What is Satan putting in front of you for you to walk into that will actually lead to your destruction? Another thing to think about is it wouldn't have been possible for this crab to know that this isn't water, but hot oil, a substance that will kill him. The reason why the crab can't know this is because it's a crab. Its little crab brain couldn't possibly understand these things. That same dynamic can be applied to us as human beings dealing with an enemy who was created with far superior intelligence and power to ours. The smartest person in this world does not have intelligence that can compare to Satan or the fallen angels. The only way to be protected is to be submitted to Jesus Christ. If that crab had a human to protect him, that human could have turned his body around. Or, if the crab could follow directions like we can, the human could have told him to stop. This is a great example of why we need to be obedient. It looks like water to the crab, but it's not. Now what if the human told the crab to stop, but the crab was rebellious and said, Why do I have to stop? I want to go in the water, so I'm going in the water. So many people walk into their own destruction just like this crab because they disobey God. This includes sin. There are things our brains couldn't possibly understand. But we can choose to follow the instructions of the one who loves us and who knows all. Don't be like this crab. Repent from your sins. Surrender your life to Jesus Christ. He loves you more than you can imagine. So, that's the second video. As I said, the crab didn't obey, or sorry, didn't have the brains to obey instructions. We have a manual given to us by God and lots of examples 
to obey. Some other verses for our directions are John chapter 10 verse 3. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leaveth them out. John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Who are the ones that perish? Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of God. The ones who reject God's knowledge, his instructions, like the crap, they want to go in the water. <coughs> or what they think is water. Where they think is pleasure, doing things of the world. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 22. For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are Scottish Scottish children, and they have none understanding. They're wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. So they can always find reasons to do evil, but they cannot find reasons to do good by God's eyes. God wants the best for us. He does not want any to perish. He's not slack concerning that. He wants all to have eternal life. Second Peter 3 verse 9. He has put the choice of life and death before you, as he did with Adam and Eve. Eve knew what was right of God, but was deceived to choose of the devil. You can choose to turn away from the anti-God practices and traditions of the world and the devil or be desensitized and continue. The Apostle John also wrote in 3 John chapter 1, verse 4, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth, not error, in truth. John 12, 36, While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. So before you get snared into traditions of men or Christmas, those of you who haven't been, been desensitized yet, Stay away from such things, or you may, once you enter darkness, you may um, become desensitized. Pro Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is the light. Isaiah chapter 51, verse 7. Hearken unto me, you that know righteousness, the people in whose heart is my law. So those are the ones who know righteousness, not the ones who follow traditions of of men or the world Ephesians 5 verse 8 for you were sometimes in darkness but now you are but now are you light in Yahweh walk as children of the light first Thessalonians so you can't mix and match you can't be in light and in dark you've got to walk as a child of the light meaning abstain from all these paganism first Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 5 you are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. We do not partake in things of Christmas, Easter, and so forth. For those who do, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Yeshua, or Christ our Lord. So you get, just like you go through Yeshua to get the grace of God, you go through Yeshua to get the gift of eternal life from God. And what is eternal life? John chapter 17, verse 3. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God. So knowing God, knowing the word of God, knowing his ways and keeping them is life eternal. Those of you not desensitized, know and follow John 4, verse 23. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. 
God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship worship him in spirit and truth. And I remind you of Psalm 119, verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 15. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. So if you have been corrupted by foreign paganism, you cannot inherit the kingdom of God. If you're walking in the flesh, reveling in things of the world, Christmas and Easter and so forth, you are not a child of the light, um, you're a child of darkness. You are living in the flesh, rather than living a spiritual life in God. The desensitized with an ear to ear can still be saved by Rome, Revelation 18 verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not her of her plagues. But those who continue keeping Christmas and Easter, no matter they've heard that is paganism, they will get the wrath of God, the plagues of God. John chapter 5, verse 25. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear shall live. So if you've been dead in traditions of men, you can hear his voice and change to be a living person. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Similar to the person who put that crab on that path to destruction in hot oil and was laughing before you put them in, but you sure laugh with even more. That is what the devil is doing to us, setting things in our way for us to follow. We're not thinking there are things of God because we have forgotten the source of those events like Christmas and Easter. So we was like, Ephesians 6 verse 3. Um, I'll read it again. We have to take, sorry, I'll read that 6 verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. How do we overcome him? Wherefore, Take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. In the evil day, and having done all to stand, <clears throat> stand therefore having your loins girded about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. You just saw the law is truth; the law is righteous. Psalms one hundred nineteen, verse one hundred seventy-two. All thy commandments are righteous. Ephesians 6, verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. So it keeps coming back to the word of God, who is the same as the manifest into flesh, Jesus Christ, or what they call you by Yeshua. So with this study, I try to bring back those of you desensitized or deceived by the pleasures or traditions of Christmas. Your lust for anti God things, um, God honoring of the season, yields death. James chapter 1, verse 15. Then, when lust hath conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. James chapter 5, verse 20. Let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. So I hope this, this study and the videos stir you to change the errors of your way and not to participate this this season's Christmas participation. Revelations 2 verse 11. He that had an ear, 
let him hear. For the Spirit saith unto the churches, he that overcomes shall not be hurt of the second death. Shalom.